So for the first time in a long time, we're taking a look at Fred Dibna. This time, how to repair a church steeple weathercock. Watching the people that are currently in the UK, or in England specifically, Guy Martin is, comes the closest to having the same type of flight characteristics, just in the wrong time period, I do believe. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this one. Next day, Fred went to fit a weathercock on a church up in the hills. Or did he have Landing to go up this? church spires, you know, is uh, nice and peaceful. Sort of, you know, there's nobody mither in you and there's no big wagons racing around the bottom of church spire. And things a lot quieter. It's still high, just nice not as high as what it normally is. All about not getting that outside, feeling you know, while I'm watching this, you know, the ground coming up on you, to. even through the screen some of these church spires they very hard to get up like there's all sorts of gargoyles sticking out of them and you can soon knock some off you see uh we, we don't want to do it like that you know like the vicar wouldn't be pleased <laughs> In the very olden days, you know, like these fellas who wanted to do something for the glory of God, you know, like stuck up a bloody great church spire. <laughs> Majority of them round where we live are, uh, you know, 1870 odd and 1880s and round about that Victorian era. Most of them were erected by colliery owners and mill owners, and I think they built them for paved the way into heaven. <laughs> You know, they weren't all bad men. <laughs> Built them to pay the way into heaven. That's kind of how that actually worked a lot of times. You know, that or, you know, it, it, uh, they wanted a better seat in purgatory. They lived on other people's misery, didn't they? You know, uh, everybody working hard, you know, digging bloody coal in a slit underground, two foot thick, and sort of they lived in, you know, in beautiful mansions, you know. The few that um, made everybody else suffer i love how he just gets to the top and he just wraps his leg around and is like all right let me do my work da, 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 da. no homie no that's one of those ones where it's like i'm that he, he he's too high up even even not being as high as what those chimney stacks and stuff were he's he's still entirely too high up for this because you fallen that's a wrap you ain't calling a doctor you call in the corner on that one do you like it? It's very nice. Oh, yeah. It's very good. Oh, How long did it take you to make? Oh, about three days, you know. A lot of sawing round here so yeah. and uh, yeah. drilling holes like. Yeah. And then we couldn't get any uh, any gold leaf, you see. So Mr. Jordan got us some. Uh, I like the colour of that. So Mr. Jordan got us some. Uh, which, uh, oh, yeah. You know, helps oh, yeah. That looks nice. Well, where did you uh, get it? It's really nice. Some Painter fella who got some, you know, hanging in store like. Uh, right, Donald, let it go. Uh, yeah. Must be a pretty yeah. precious commodity these days, wasn't well, it? Yeah. Twelve pound a boot now. He, he, you know, he missed golden opportunity there. You got the priest asking where you got it from. It's a big old rooster, it looks like. So I'd have been like, you know, strip club, but <laughs> just to mess with him. Uh, yeah, there's I no mean, you can see it's only paid for, well, it's less than paper thick, yeah. and it's not very good quality neither compared with what they used to have in the olden days. Yeah. But it'll, you know, it'll still it'll last, right. it'll oh, it'll last for 20 years, Will it'll it? still be 20 years about. It'll be our time. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, right, well, I'll go All up right. there now, and uh, yeah. we'll see whether it spins right, right or not. All right. Do a bit of repair job on those louvers whilst you're at it. Yeah, well, they're, they're all rotten, them toppings. <laughs> Sometimes when you're, you know, halfway upside of the tower, where you're climbing up the ladder, you know, bang, bang, bang sort of thing, and bloody great pigeon will come zooming out and nearly knock you off sort of style. 
whatever I'm climbing up, I, I treat it with the greatest of respect because I know the damn thing will kill me if I don't. You know, I'm going to fall off and rattle down the side of a big church spire and break a few fancy bits off on my way, more than likely. And, you know, I'll be... <laughs> break a few of the fancy bits off. <laughs> oh, it, I was about to say, what happens if you get halfway up you got to use the bathroom? Like, how quickly can you make it back down? No more. It's like half a day out with the Undertaker. Has he got any friends? No. No, no, no not nothing at all. Get to rely on it too much. believe in God. I sometimes have a feeling that he, he might know me as, uh, you know, <laughs> that's him who climbs up these, you know, my church spires. Sort of some days he don't like me, I know, <laughs> when it rains. <laughs> you drive 20 miles to a big chimney and just get there and get up the top and the, pff, the heavens open and you might as well have stopped at home in bed. <laughs> Whereas, you know, on the other hand, uh, you know, he don't let me fall off and things of that nature. Or drop anything and kill anybody, you know. My wife, Alison, says to me, you'll never fall off, you know, there's somebody watching you somewhere. Uh, she says, I'm better off up there than I am on the floor, as you might say. Because quite often I trip over things on the floor. Hey. That's funny. His wife said that she's he's better off up up high than he is on the ground. Uh, he's he corroborates it by saying he's all the time tripping over stuff on the ground. And it's funny because first couple of videos I watched of uh, Fred Dibna and uh, with the with safety rules and stuff like that, I'm sure that compared to modern safety regulations and things of that nature, that it leads to the modern safety regulations probably lead to more carelessness because you you tied in on a harness you got the you got the somewhere to take and tie off with your lanyard and you know things of that nature so it, it probably you got a healthy respect you got to have a healthy respect still for being up so high but probably makes you more reckless a little bit compared to what Dibna and people that did what he did what he did apologies for that sound in the background one of my kids uh, devices went off apparently um, they didn't have all the safety regulations so I'm sure they had to be more careful whereas if you're tied in with a lanyard you you slip off the side well you take and drop about two and a half foot you got that sudden stop all this just happening right there and you're you're caught so i'm sure it, it it that probably would in comparison make modern people that take and do that in modern times or something similar in modern times a little bit more i don't know a, a little bit less cautious send it up This particular weathercock, you know, I made in the backyard at home, uh, sort of style. Well, like a peacock. I once made uh, Gabriel blowing his horn, but we made the horn part too narrow, and the bloody thing fell off in a storm. <laughs> so now it's a bit unbalanced, and when it's blowing hard, it spins round like a windmill. wonder a lot about what happens to you after you're dead, you know. But, I don't know. There's lots of people with more brains than me who, uh, you know, think that uh, there is this wonderful place somewhere. My sort of ideal of heaven would be somewhere where um, nobody did any fighting, nobody were hungry, and there were plenty for everybody. 
you know, my little bit of it would be just to be left alone with a big pile of rusty steam engines and enough <laughs> my own plate for mendum like sort of thing. You know, it, it would be quite wonderful, that, you know, because you wouldn't have to worry about where your next dinner were going to come from, you know, uh, and you could just get on with, uh, you know, mending these ancient relics forever. Well, there we have it. Fred didn't know how to repair a church steeple weathercock. I, I love the fact he talks about his idea of heaven would be somewhere he's just left alone and <laughs> with a bunch of rusty engine parts or rusty steam engines to uh, be fixed up to get running back again. This is pretty interesting. He's not as high. He's not as high up as the chimney stacks or anything of that nature, but he's still higher up and he's still just on the ladders and things of that nature. And uh, just hearing him, the conversational way he's speaking through all this uh, about stuff different, uh, you know, because normally with the other stuff, it, it's about taking down the chimney stacks and, and it's the precautions that are taken and how you have to take and think as you're doing stuff. And this is more just conversational about just everyday type stuff for the most part, which is really, really cool. It's different than the other ones that we've looked at. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I know I sure did. Um, Be looking at some more Fred Dibna again in the future. Uh, it's been too long since I've looked at him. I, I like watching anything that's related to him. Uh, we're going to watch some episode stuff that's on YouTube about him. So, y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace. <laughs>